welcome to GDB World. In today's video, we will take a look at how we can make this stylized wooden plank material in Substance Designer. If you enjoyed today's video, or if it helps you in any way, please like and subscribe. And for that, let's jump straight into the video. So the graph is a 4K PVR metallic roughness setup. And we're going to start out with um, setting up our first plank. So we're going to make three planks. They're all going to be essentially the same. It's just they're going to warp slightly differently to each other. Uh, but it starts out as just a square shape and then we're just beveling it to give ourselves a bit of depth to it and then we're just going to do a series of slope blur gray scales for the input we're going to be using just a course of noise initially and just decreasing that scale a little bit to seven and we'll just increase that disorder a little bit for the second slope blur i had to change the tiling mode to no tiling because it was starting to sort of uh, pull through on the sides there and then we'll switch the blend node to min so then it's subtracting from the shape itself. Next up is our multi-directional warp. We're going to be doing two directions with a min mode and then we're going to push it into our levels node just to control the amount of detail on those edges and sharpen them up a little bit. And then finally we'll leave it with a warp node with nice crystals and then we're just going to blur them out a little bit and uh, just keep the intensity quite low because we just want it on those edges and just to add a bit of texture to them. Uh, finally, we just create our output nodes um, and then we can just duplicate the planks two more times. Just changing the name of the frames, this just keeps things tidy so we don't lose track of uh, the outputs for each of these nodes. It can get a little bit messy sometimes. And then we can pump it into our generator here. So we're just doing a normal tile generator and then pushing it into our final blend node which is connected to our outputs there. As a side note remember to change the blend node of the tile generator to max so that it allows it to overlap. It's like I did forget to do here but I do come back and do it later on. And now we can move on to creating our grain. So we're going to be quite deliberate with the grain and um, not use anything too random but we're still going to have it sort of splattered so that it is procedural. It's just we want to make sure we have as much control as possible. So to do this, we make it sort of like we would with our grass. It's just a waveform. And then we use a gradient to halve it. And then we're going to mirror it, that against itself just to give us that nice line in the middle. Then it's a two FX map. This is just two quadrant nodes and then a nice iterate node, which is going to be the root. So this FX map is going to control the scattering of the shape. And we just make, make sure we plug that into the input, not into the background, because by default it goes into the background. And then we're going to create an empty function in our offset. Now the offset is just a float vector 2, and then we put in our uh, iterate number, so that's what that variable at the top is. And then we just put that into a randomized node that just generate a random number between the values. What this will do is it will just give us a nice really quick splatter that we can sort of control depending on the float values that we've got there. Nice and simple. Uh, we're going to use that three times, one for each of our planks. The warp node here is completely optional, it's not something I actually end up using, uh, but it's quite useful if you want a little bit extra detail in between the cuts. And then we're just putting in a directional warp and we're going to use a gradient linear and then we're just going to allow the warp node to essentially tile the material for us so the only way it's going to do that is if you really over exaggerate the values and then we're just going to start preparing the shape to be blended in with the original shape What you're seeing here is we're just using one of our planks and we're going to be setting the max height with the histogram range and then blending that in with our cuts. Continue work on the bigger cuts for plank one. So we're just going to do another histogram scan. We're going to fix up this little uh, separation here by just adjusting that gradient a little bit to ensure that the mask is fully closed. Then we're able to come back and we can blend that in with a non-uniform color. Uh, just until the background remains white and then we're going to use a multi-directional warp and warp in that for perlin noise just to get break up the shape a little bit to make sure it's not as perfect as it currently is. We're ending off each shape again with this output node just to keep things tidy and then we can bring it down into a nice blend node to finally merge with our planks. 
so each plank is going to have its own individual uh, cuts created for it but they are all going to contain the same um, dense cuts that we're creating at the top here. To ensure it remains uniform, um, all the nodes that have been used are the same, uh, but we are making some changes to the FX maps for each plank's variations. Just to ensure that scatter is a little bit different, because we don't want it to scatter the same, but we do want it to warp the same. So just make some changes to the quadrant nodes, uh, just change the luminosity a little bit, change the offset and pattern size. Uh, you're welcome to put a function in here if you want to uh, go a bit above and beyond, but for my cases it's working fine, so I'm just going to stick to the values on the screen here. You can use random seed again to give yourself some just different uh, results. Then just copy the nodes down from P1 and then just put them into their uh, respective output nodes here. Then we can blend them in with the final shape again. If you want this nice broken um, plank look, just go ahead and add a tiling effect to one of the shapes. Then we can move on to the bolts. So the bolts, nice and simple, it's just going to be two capsule shapes. Top one's going to be for the actual bolt itself, and the bottom one's just going to be for the mask. When we're using the histogram scan, just decrease that position a little bit to give it a bit of a bevel. And then we can blend those two together. And then you're going to use the transform 2D, making sure you're turning off the tiling. And just make sure you distort the shape a little bit, because uh, otherwise it's not going to appear round when it gets tiled with the tile generator. And we can come and blend in the shape with the original shape, making sure it comes in before the tile generator. Uh, begins and you can just use the alt key to create little inputs here and then connect to those inputs and it works the same as connecting to the original node as well which is a bit of a handy tip there now we can come make the termite noise so this is just done with the fx map and then we just plug in an iterate node um, there's a cool effect you can do if you put the luminosity down to 0.2 and then just increase the amount of iterations. It gives you this nice banded circle uh, that's really useful if you want to make like a knot or in our case a bit of a termite noise. So I'm going to use this and warp it a little bit so it's not so perfect. So just to pull a noise will do the job. And then obviously you want to blur it a little bit because we want a just nice transition from the middle to the outside. And then we're just going to use a histogram scan and an inverted grayscale. Blend those two together. Finally we want to scatter the noise. So we're going to use a tile sampler for this one. Uh, we are going to need three but let's just start with one initially so you don't have to do the work three times. Make it as random as you like. Uh, put a bit of a random rotation. Random mask, because we don't want too many, we just want a few. And then finally, we want to plug in our bolts section into the main mask of the tile sampler. So then it cuts off any circles that were getting generated in between the lines and the cuts and stuff. Finally, we use a blend node to combine it with the base planks, and that then becomes the new pattern to be used with our tile generator. Then we move on to the diffuse. It's going to be made up of two gradient maps for the wood, and then it's going to be one laid on additionally for uh, tackling the bolt coloring over the top. So, first two that you're seeing here is just for the wood side. Uh, one's going to be sort of just colouring in the luminancy colouring for the tiling and then one is focusing more on the curvature smooth side of things so that's like uh, the outlines of our details and things like that. And finishing off the diffuse we want to put in a HSL node so it just allows us to do finer adjustments to saturation and lightness if we didn't quite get it right with the gradient itself. Um, 
and then we can move on to creating our bolt coloring. So our bolt coloring is we're going to have to copy across that uh, generator. So just create a duplication of it, and then add in the mask of the bolts, push it into a normal map, then into a curvature smooth, and then we're going to blend this in with just a metal 003, uh, just with the roughness map itself, because we just want the grey noise values. And we're going to use an add sub on that blend node itself as well. Uh, finally, we'll just create another mask from that mask just so it's a little bit stronger and we can control it individually for the color. And then we're just going to add another blend node to then um, blend in our new gradient map that we're going to color uh, that's just going to control the bolts themselves. And if that brings today's video to a close, if you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe, and I hope you have a lovely day.